Last week's return to Pulau Mantanani with Jonathan from the Marine Research Foundation had me flying high before meeting back up with Asmin from Reef Check Malaysia to see how they are tackling the issue of plastic pollution as well as keeping an eye on the health of the island's coral reefs and marine life. I've just taken the first morning flight from Kota Kinabalu to Sandakan to meet up with Casey from the Marine Research Foundation. I want to find out how cutting-edge technology is helping to save sharks and rays. It's all hustle and bustle in downtown Sandakan and waterfront markets, where everything is for sale. And I meet with Casey, who is going to show me around. The central market is buzzing with action, with stall upon stall selling all sorts of food items, fruits and vegetables. But it's at the back of the market, where the seafood is brought in, that KC particularly wants to introduce me to the issue that drives her research work. I have been to wet fish markets before, but I must admit, I don't know much about the seafood on offer. And KC explains what's on all the tables. And it's not long before we find stingrays and sharks. So these are all the sharks, and these are the fins they cut out. I see the fins already taken out. Yeah, this out. is the fin they cut out as well. Even the innards. Ah, uh, yeah, and then they will sell the meat. So, all of them are by catch. These are all the baby sharks? Mm, right? The baby sharks, yes. Most of the catch on the trawler, they will just uh, bring it back to the market. I see. Yes. So I learned from my time as a shrimp fisherwoman with Liana a couple of weeks back that bycatch is a catch-all name for marine creatures that are not intentionally targeted by the fishing activities, but are caught unintentionally all the same, and are most often sold in the wet fish markets as a byproduct or sometimes thrown back wastefully into the sea. KC wants to introduce me to one open-minded and forward-thinking seafood company, Wide Growth Marine, who support her research work into shark and ray bycatch. It's on their trawlers that KC installs her simple but high-tech piece of camera equipment with the help from Jonathan and Mei Yi. I'm Kuiji and people call me KC and I'm from KL and study in University Malaysia Sabah. And I joined MRF for almost two years. I've been studying about sharks and rays by catch on in trawler industry. I try to use modern technology to collect data on sharks and rays by catch. That was a full-on morning. Intense, but also quite depressing. It just goes to show how the marine environment, or I guess any living environment for that matter, is so interconnected and easily unbalanced by the slightest unsustainable action. Yes, that's why, that's why we are looking at ways to reduce bycatch and try to improve the fishing standard with aim to potentially uh, reduce the unsustainable impact of fishing upon a marine environment. So even though we know what species that are sold in the market, but we don't know the exact location where they are caught mm. by the trawlers. So we are using the cameras to track where are the sharks and rays bycatch happens in the area. So I heard from Jonathan that you love playing with all his toys and drones. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I love gadgets. Okay, so I'm going to show you some of my gadgets and how I use time-lapse photography to collect data on bycatch. So now we are installing the battery and the solar panel and the camera. So the solar panel will charge the battery and the battery will provide power to the camera. This is the camera, right? Yes. Where did you buy it? Uh, no, yeah, this is custom made for us. Oh. And then, yeah, so this is the rest, the, the lens, and then this is the GPS module, mm -hmm. and then down there is the Raspberry Pi, and this is the memory disk, the SSD, so it stores images. GPS antenna is at the bottom, 
So when the camera face down, the antenna will be facing ah. the sky. Did you learn all this in college? No. Oh. Uh, when I started at MRF, I've never done any of this. And I learned it all from University of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> And wow. with, uh, then I need to teach myself and with the guidance from Nate and the, uh, the rest of MRF team. Hmm. That's crazy, so you learn this by yourself? Uh, yeah. You learn this by yourself just watching you know, videos on YouTube? Yeah, but I seek advice from local electrician and coders ah. yeah, as well. Seems mm. like you're more of a geek than Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> So now we are going to put the camera on top of the mask and over there and then it gives the best eye, bird eye view of the back deck of the trawler so when the fishermen bring the nets in when they sort out the catch over the back deck so the camera will take picture every 5 seconds so that it won't miss any sharks and ray by catch um, and it contains GPS we will know where the location uh, the sharks and rays by catch happens I see, mm. so how long does this camera run for? It runs for a week or more and then well, every trip when they come back, I will come and collect the data and find out what the camera has seen. Okay, so I yeah. guess we'll need help with Jonathan again. Yeah. Jonathan, <laughs> can you help us? It takes Jonathan's long arms and legs to get the camera system installed in its final surveillance location. Done. Okay, let's go for trolling to test the new camera. Another day at sea. Okay. I can't wait. Let's go. This is our troller coming in now. Unfortunately, it just started to rain. It's been threatening all morning. Now it's really starting to pour. It's gonna be a long day. As we leave Sandakan, the weather and sea conditions deteriorate. We see it's going to be a tough day ahead. So we all settle down for a long, rough ride out to sea. We finally reach the trawling grounds, and the boat's crew drop the trawl net and begin fishing. So the trawl is set. Now we've just got to sit back and wait for a couple of hours more in this rolling sea. I think I'm getting a little bit seasick. Whilst the captain plots course and fishes over his chosen area, there's nothing more for us to do but to sit back and wait. After several hours of fitful rest on the rocking boat, the trawl net is finally brought back on board. Hopefully, Casey's newly installed time-lapse camera is taking photos of all the day's catch. So, there are two white-spotted bamboo sharks for this catch. I think I saw more rays just now. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's another ray over there. We haven't really checked, but from what I can see, there's a lot of bycatch. Yeah. There's not just one or two stingrays, but a few. There's a few, yeah. Yes. I guess the area we were fishing just now is a popping area for the stingrays. What does that mean, popping area? It means it's a breeding ground for them to grow, grow up. Right now we're going to release these white spotted bamboo sharks back into the sea. At least we get to save two today. It's crazy how much rubbish they fished out from the sea. But I'm not gonna let the boys throw them back out. So I'm gonna try and collect as much rubbish as I can. Can someone get me a bucket? Casey explains to me that over 90% of this catch is actually bycatch and not the intended species of shrimps they were actively trawling for. It's another long, bumpy, and wet ride home, and I have so much racing through my mind.
Today has been a long and tiring day. There was so much rubbish, and I can't believe how much that has affected me. But I'm quite happy that we were able to save two bamboo sharks. At the same time, though, quite disheartened at the fact that there were so many baby rays in the net. But this is why I need to talk to Casey about her work and find out more. We've been chased by the rain all day, but lucky we're back on shore now. What have we got here? Yes, we have collected the hard disk from the mm -hmm. camera. So we need to check the pictures to make sure the camera is running all right just now mm -hmm. before we leave it for a longer fishing period next week. How they, many pictures do you take in a day? For a day, mm -hmm. they capture 17,000 pictures. 17,000? Yeah. But not all the pictures uh, have fish because they only trawl for six hours and then they sort out for two hours. So usually we just scan through the two hours when they sort out the fish. I see. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. So these are the images this morning. Let us see, find out the white spotted bamboo shark just now. Wow, that's a lot of pictures. So this is when they release the cash here. Mm. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, you see the bamboo shark there. Yeah, over yeah. here. And Quite obvious. This is the other one. So the place that we went to trawl just now, do you think that's a potential breeding ground? Yeah, it might be a potential breeding ground for the sharp nose stingray just now because we see a lot of juveniles over there. Because the pictures has GPS data here, so we will know the exact location where the sharks and rays catch, caught. Ah. Uh, and then uh, by, with this data, we can propose to fisheries department uh, after we identify the hotspot area, mm -hmm. we can propose to them that uh, this area is important for certain species as a breeding ground or nursery ground. We advise them to have a better management measure with this data such as time area closure. For example, if there's a lot of juvenile hammer shark in that particular area in April, for example, uh -huh. so we, we might suggest to the fisheries department saying that oh, there are a lot of juvenile hammer head shark in this area is very important. So can we avoid the trawler to go into that area in April, for example. So what else have you got? I'm interested to see more. So we got other hard drive that collected from other cameras, from other trawlers mm -hmm. earlier this week, but I haven't go through it yet. So now we can go through it. Okay. So this was last week? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, and it's a big that's ray. A big, that's a big ray. Yeah. Oh, that's a turtle. Yes. Obviously, this one doesn't have a turtle excluded device. Mm, unfortunately, not all the trawlers have uh, have using the turtle excluded device. Mm. Yeah, but luckily the turtle is alive and the fisherman released it. Let's check out another boat. There's a bit. Oh, what's that? That's it's a giant guitar shark. It's very difficult for a diver to see a guitar shark or the wedge fish. Mm. And it's such a sad thing that. The only time we get to see a big one is yes, it's they get on caught. the trawler. Yes, I've learned a lot of depressing facts today. <laughs> but yes, I can see how just how crucial your work is, and I I really do appreciate you guys doing this. You guys are doing amazing work. <laughs> Thank you for that. But I have got to put the ca uh, the disc back to the camera before they leave tomorrow. Mm, so I will need Jonathan's help again. Okay, Thank I'm you. gonna call him. Yeah. Jonathan, can you <laughs> help us? Bye, Jonathan. Bye, Jonathan. Casey. Alex. Casey, Alex. Casey. Alex. It's been an incredibly long day back here in Sandakan, and I can't help be impressed by the energy and commitment Casey shows to her research. And with the help of the rest of the MRF team, she is putting her self-taught tech knowledge into action, come rain or shine, to get the data she needs to help reduce shark and ray bycatch in Malaysia's fishing industry. We did save a couple of sharks and removed a bag load of plastic pollution, but I know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Join me next week when I return to meet up with my paddy dive instructor Mark and we both head back out diving with the whole MRF team for my final marine adventure here on Borneo Ocean Diaries. <laughs>